Hey Sagittarius, welcome to your uh, reading for June 1st through the 7th. We're going to see what's happening the week ahead with this deck here, and then we're going to pull a spirit message from this unicorn deck here. Sagittarius, we're coming up this week on a full moon Sagittarius eclipsed. So this energy is going to be with us for a while, up to a year possibly. Um, and it's very, very intense energy, uh, which is one of the reasons why we're seeing a lot of the unrest right now. We're coming into a new age. People are uh, being affected by this new moon energy and wanting to live their best life, wanting to feel safe and secure, uh, wanting the truth to be known, wanting a sense of fairness and justice. So we are seeing the world shift coming into a new age. And we're going to see how these energies might be affecting you personally, Sagittarius. So this is Sagittarius, the sun, moon, and rising. And again, because it's a moon in your sign, some of you may be feeling it more intensely than some of the other signs, but we're going to see what the cards have to say about what's coming up. So three of wands is the first card coming up here. And three of wands is a card that kind of talks about the point of no return. What's been seen cannot be unseen. Uh, three of wands has a lot of meanings to it. Uh, it can be self-employment, business, taking things to market. Um, it could be a collaboration or three people coming together for some creative or business concept. However, the feeling that I'm getting for you guys, Sagittarius, I feel this is in connection with awakening because one of the meanings of this card is a mental expansion. Like you're having these aha moments, you're having these epiphanies. And once they've been had, like once you're out of the box, you can't go back in the box. So Sagittarius, I feel like the way that you guys are experiencing this on a personal level is I feel you're going over the injustices that you have experienced in your life um, through family members, work situations, past relationships. And I feel like a lot of you are having these epiphanies and like these aha moments where spirit is giving you a glimpse as to why that happened. It's like you're being given behind the scenes information because you're ready for it now. You can process it now. And because it's helping you understand why you had to have that experience, why it was a part of your growth. It's also in some ways, <laughs> Sagittarius, I feel like some of you are like, wow, like this is like x-ray vision. Like you're seeing through people. You're seeing through people in a way that you've never quite seen before. Even if you might be a really kind of, uh, you know, wise or, uh, you know, uh, good, good at reading people kind of person, right? Um, you might be coming into a new level where it's more so than ever before. Like you're going to be able to know in like two seconds flat if somebody's bluffing or if somebody's lying to you or if they're putting on this personality, but behind it, there's a completely different person. I feel Sagittarius, like a lot of you have asked for this or have wanted to have this ability and you're receiving it. That's what I'm feeling for you guys with the three of wands. Your next card here, my darlings, is the ten of swords. Now, I know this is a super scary looking card. In most decks, ten of swords is somebody with like a bunch of swords sticking out at them. We don't see this and think of, oh, this is a good thing. However, the symbolism and the meaning of the card is breaking free from karmic cycles, breaking free from addictions, uh, uh, breaking free from anyone who is disrespecting you or not being loyal or faithful or betraying you. Um, it's not a negative uh, card. It's not to be seen negatively. And I'm not like a Pollyanna person. You guys that watch my videos, you know that I'm very direct. And if something's coming up that I'm like, oh, you know, bad news, brace yourself, I'm going to say it. But in my years as a reader, one of the things that I have seen, Ten of Swords always comes up for the person I'm reading for right before this massive, happy, positive breakthrough. And the way the energy comes in is that there's something we've been holding on to because it served us well for a while. And maybe when we first encountered it, if it's a job 
or a friendship or a relationship, like when we first encountered it or when we first landed it, it may have been a big deal. It may have been a, a significant come up for us in some way. Like, yes, I've made it, right? Uh, it, it could have been something really uh, special at one point. And then what ends up happening is we outgrow it. We outgrow it uh, or we learn whatever the karmic lesson was that we were supposed to learn and we're done with it. And now it's getting to the point where even though it helped us get to a certain point, now it's come to a point where it's holding us back. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to have to end the situation. And it's bittersweet. On one hand, you're done, you're over it, you're ready to move on, but you may have some sentimental memories. You may have like some fun times where, like I said, it's bittersweet. You're like, okay, you know, it's time to move on to the, to the next thing. I do feel for some of you, this is a situation or this is a person uh, that you're dealing with uh, who um, has been seeing the self-work that you've been doing on yourself. Like you, they, they've been seeing that like you've been working on yourself, you've been healing yourself, they've been seeing the progress that you're making, but and it could be a, it could be a relationship, it could be a family situation, it could be um, a situation at work, but I feel for some reason this person has been like super clingy and needy and almost making you feel guilty or trying to make you feel guilty for your progress. Like they're so unhappy, they're so miserable, but you're so happy and you're doing so well. And uh, I think a lot of you are just nipping this in the bud. Like you're just like, this is not a good situation. This is not a good energy. <coughs> Excuse me. Like maybe we've been through a lot together, but at this point, it's like I've tried helping this person, like they're drowning, I'm trying to help them, I'm trying to pull them out, but they keep grabbing me and pulling me down, right? And I don't want to drown, and I've tried to help, and they just kind of want to keep flailing and, and, and pulling at me. And so for this reason, I feel like you guys are uh, putting an end to a uh, relationship and I don't like I said it's not going to be romantic for all of you and you guys know the ones of you that watch my videos I keep love and romance separate from the weekly forecasts the weekly forecasts are meant to focus on you and your life and not um, around love and romance but if you want love and romance you can check out the love readings for June that are linked in the description so I do feel a lot of you are just kind of having to walk away from uh, a big, big part of your history or a big, big part of your past. And I feel Sagittarius, some of you are having an epiphany, like these really close friends that you think that you had, or you thought, oh, you know, these are my, these are my buddies. These are my friends. Like we've been through hell together and we've been through everything together. I feel like some of you are having this epiphany where you're like, wait a minute, these people aren't friends. They're more like drinking buddies right? Like, uh, you know, we can cheer each other up when we're going through a wrong, when we're going through a hard time. And that was like, oh, well, we're being positive and we're encouraging each other. But you're realizing that the relationships don't really have a lot of depth, don't have a lot of depth. And some of them over time have become really codependent. And I think a lot of you are even a uh, clearing path for real friendship like 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 people that you know you're going to be able to count on in really hard times uh that's just a feeling or a vibe i'm getting for some of you sagittarius your next card here is oh one more thing too with the ten of swords because this is clearing karma this is breaking free from addiction a lot of you will have a very 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 intense release this full moon period and when you're sensitive to moon energy you can feel the energies three days before the full moon so this would start around june 2nd and three days after so in through to uh june 8th uh i can say as a scorpio uh sometimes when there's a full moon or a new moon in scorpio depending on where i am with my clearing and what's going on in my life i and i'm very i'm very sensitive to moon energy uh, there have been times where I've felt the moon energy uh, a week, a week and a half even in some cases. I think there was a period last year 
where it was like a week and a half before the full moon in Scorpio. And it was just like, whoa, it was really intense. So some of you may already for a while have been feeling like, whoa, like a lot of stuff is coming to the surface and what's going on. Some of you have been feeling the energy for a while, but know and understand that you're experiencing a permanent release that's going to elevate you. So be gentle with yourselves and understand and know that those of you who've been struggling with addictions or any kind of self-medicating this is a time where you're going to be able to make a lot of progress in this area and feel like, you know what, this is it. I've finally got a handle on it. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm finally getting a handle on it. So be proud. Be optimistic. Uh, keep pushing through, Sagittarius, because you guys are really coming up on some really big breakthroughs here. Your next card here, my darlings is the fool how very wonderful this is a major arcana card and those of you that you watch my readings you've heard me talk about the major arcana cards when the major arcana cards come up they signify for us that we're coming into a time of change we're coming into a new chapter of our life that's directly connected to something we came here to learn something we came here to master um, it's, uh, it's a big kind of crossroads in our life where our angels and guides are lining up and stepping in and intervening and helping us with the change. And typically when the fool card comes up, you're really eager for this new beginning. You're really eager to go in a completely new direction. And you may have people in your life that are like Sagittarius, what in the heck are you doing right now? Right now, we talked about the full moon in Sagittarius and how it's eclipsed and how this energy is going to be for us for with us for about a year. And so I feel that for a lot of you, Sagittarius, a lot of you that were pulled to this video, whenever you end up falling upon it, you could be watching it six months after I posted it. But whenever you fall upon it, uh, the fool card is going to be the primary energy of your shift the primary energy of how you're experiencing the awakening and so i feel a lot of you are going in a completely new direction where you're breaking out of the way other people view you you're breaking out of the way other people see you it's almost like they're like you have this whole new identity but really what it is is you've come into your authenticity it's who you've always been but you haven't really felt like the people around you would approve or would like it and so maybe you've been editing or you've been trying to like you know kind of like well this is maybe like more how I'm gonna have friends or people are gonna like me all that's coming off and you're going in this new direction so some of you may be doing things like really really uh opposite kind of career changes you may be going from one career or line of work to another which is completely different and has nothing to do with what you've been doing up until now or something completely different or has nothing to do with what you went to school for like this massive shift or change or you may be um making big changes in terms of uh, where you're living, your personal life, your relationships. And there's going to be people who are like, Sagittarius, what in the heck are you doing? Like, have you lost your mind? Like, what's going on? They don't understand, but you're feeling very pulled to go in this new direction. The one thing the Fool card encourages you to do, yes, you're being guided. Yes, you're being called into the new direction, but look before you leap calculate the cost yes we want to manifest yes we want to be positive right but um you know we, we can't just be like oh my dream is to uh um my dream is to to be an artist right i'm just giving an example somebody's like oh my dream is to be an artist so i'm gonna go into work today i'm gonna quit my job and I'm going to manifest it and I'm going to, you know, put my work out there and people are going to pay thousands of dollars for it. And I'm going to have all this time to work on my projects. Uh, you want to have some kind of an in-between kind of plan, right? Maybe your job is taking way too much of your time and you don't have time to do what you're doing in terms of uh, your work. And you're like, well, I got to leave this job so I can focus on my creativity, you're going to have to find some job in between where money's coming in, but you're going to have a little bit more flexibility. You know, um, I know for me, when I transitioned from having a nine to five job 
to working for myself, there was a period of time I was doing deliveries. I was working for DoorDash. I was working for psychic hotlines, right? So you might have to find uh, an in-between. And that's what the Fool card says. Yes, you might be going in this direction that people are like, what in the heck are you doing right now? But there has to be some uh so, some structure to the chaos so to speak so if you're having a hard time figuring out how to make the transition or how to make the leap in a way where you're still safe and you're still looking out for yourself you can pray about this you can call in your guardian angels and guides to help you see the solutions and to give you the courage to act on that guidance as well okay your next card here sagittarius is the Hierophant. So two major Arcana cards coming in back to back after a really significant message in the beginning of the reading that you're having this awakening, this point of no return, can't unsee what you've seen kind of energy. So this is it, Sagittarius. If you've been, and I think Aries had something very similar, but, and it could be a fire sign thing, but if you've been feeling blown around, you're coming into your uh, roots. You're coming into creating structure in your life. The Hierophant is about truth. It's about commitment. It's about honesty. It's about uh, old school, you know, principles and ethics. And so Sagittarius, a lot of you are coming into your truth and you're going to have no patience or no desire to be aligned with anybody who's not in their truth and whose morals and principles and whose ways of life aren't aligned with your values uh, and, and the things that you feel are necessary uh, to help people as, 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 a, as a whole on this world to be united, to live in peace. Um, I feel a lot of you will begin, uh, I, like I'm hearing grassroots outreach, grassroots outreach, but um, I don't feel like, like you're starting an organization. Maybe some of you are, but I, I don't think it's anything like that formal. I feel like, like the Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror. I feel like you guys are in this energy where you're like, I'm starting with me and the way that I'm living my life. And anybody who's not living in an honorable way, I don't judge them. I don't fight with them. I just, I'm not going to align myself with that energy or allow those people into my life. And so I feel with this Hierophant, I'm getting like the Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror. Like you're like, I'm starting to make a change within myself. And in this way, you're inspiring a lot of other people. I do feel Sagittarius, some of you may be, and Leo had something similar. So again, it could be fire sign stuff. But um, I feel that some of you are even stepping into the area of like mentoring or teaching others or people are coming to you uh, for advice. I feel some of you are stepping into like the role of like patriarch of the future generations of your family or matriarch, patriarch or matriarch of your family. So um, uh, essentially you're the godfather or the godmother of your family, you know, patriarch, matriarch, you're the head of the family and, uh, cousins, nieces, nephews, uh, siblings, people come to you like, Oh, what are we supposed to do? Or how do we handle this? A lot of you are stepping into that family head kind of role. Um, yes. So that's what I'm feeling. Uh, very, very powerful energy. Uh, and a lot of you might also just kind of be like teaching or mentoring, uh, you know, younger members of your family or uh, younger people who are uh, in the families of your of, of your friends, you know, friends of the family, uh, you're you're setting the precedent, you're setting, you're setting an example for change for positive change, and you're staying committed to this. And for some of you, it will also open doors to like really, really healthy, like life partner marriage kind of relationships. But again, um, you know, we're not going to get too much into love and romance in the weeklies. So we're going to go ahead and see what's coming up for you guys with your oracle message for the week. And as always, Sagittarius, I highly, highly recommend that you guys watch your um, moon and rising sign videos because some weeks those are going to resonate with you more than others. They may be more helpful or add more information. If you would like a private reading with me, you can schedule it with me through the Calendly link. So here we have support and it says, ask for help, get more rest, nurture yourself, right? 
Um, the, the orange is really jumping out at me. So the orange, I feel also is kind of like drawing attention, Sagittarius, to your sacral chakra. Okay, if you can look up meditations, affirmations for the sacral chakra, that might be very helpful for a lot of you um, as you're going through the changes and the shifts. And you do need to focus on yourself. And remember how we talked about, you know, people who are not aligned with your beliefs, with your goals. It might also be that a lot of you are just you know, we talked about that 10 of swords, somebody's draining you, somebody's pulling you down. And you're like, whoa, I can't rescue everybody. So some of you are taking care of yourself by, um, you know, cutting away any uh, interactions or connections that are draining you or that are beginning to feel toxic. And when you're doing this, you're making a statement to the universe that I don't accept this into my life. I'm only going to accept people and relationships where it's supportive, where it's upbuilding, right? So some of you are calling this into your life and you're starting doing this this week. Uh, and it could be a good idea for you to practice asking for help, right? Um, or uh, to just let people know that you need some time to rest or you're not going to be available. And nurture yourself. Nurture, nurture, nurture yourself. Do things for yourself that are soothing, that feel good for you. Um, you know, it, gosh, something as simple as like, um, you know, painting or drawing or writing or listening to music or uh, whatever it might be, you know, just things that, that feel good or that feel relaxing. Try to incorporate this energy. All right, Sagittarius, uh, one more thing. Um, I'm going to be posting a link to the fundraiser that I talked about that I announced I was trying to help a wonderful single mother of two kids uh, hold on to her salon so she doesn't lose it. She's able to go back to work finally. The governor in New Mexico is allow or in her, you know, allowing them to for the salons to open up again, but she's still behind on bills because she couldn't get unemployment during that time. And I want to try to help her out and hold on to that salon. So uh, when I did the last fundraiser, we raised about $888, magic angel numbers, 888. But if you can, I'm asking everyone, if you can, if it's not going to break the bank, if it's not going to hurt you, just donate $1. Donate $1 to the GoFundMe. I'm going to put the post in my community tab. And then um, if we reach the $2,500 goal before uh, or by this Friday, then this Saturday, which I believe is the 6th, I'm going to go ahead and come on YouTube and do for free uh, live readings. I'll just pick people from the comments on the live video and I will pull cards for you guys. So um, if we can do that, I'll do a live session, right? And like I said, just one dollar, you know, it, it's really doable. We can totally reach uh, the amount to help her, you know, hold on to the salon and save the salon, um, you know, but you know, if you can't, I still love you anyway. I appreciate you for being here. And I thank you guys for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. I'm wishing you all a wonderful week. Take care, Sagittarius.